What's going on everyone? It's Bales and welcome back to another video on the channel. UFC 285 is now done and dusted and what a main card and what an event it was. It was the return of John Jones and I think he cemented himself as the greatest of all time after his win. We'll get into all the main card stuff in this video. So if you are new around here, make sure you click subscribe on the channel if you haven't already and also like the video if you're enjoying the content around here. But let's get straight into that main event, John Jones defeating Cyril Gann in just over two minutes with a submission from the start. John John looked, he just looked apart, didn't he? I, I thought Cyril looked a bit, a bit afraid, a bit, a bit scared. I think. I think that he looked like he was in a bit of deep water, and John was able to to capitalise on that and and end up getting the win. So I think that that pretty much puts the debate to bed about who the greatest of all time is. He's now been a champ in two weight divisions obviously he's been champ since he was 23 years of age has never lost a fight and he just looks dominant in essentially every fight that he that he's in so it was for me it was between Khabib and and John I think I had Khabib just ahead just because of how dominant Khabib was but I think with this but it was head it was neck and neck but now it's it's John John is now the clear greatest of all time and and he showed that again so what a performance what's next I think Stipe will be next for him and that's what I want I want you real bad. Obviously he called him in after the fight, so that'll be a very good fight. They're looking probably, I think from what it sounds like, International Fight Week is when they want to do that, so can't wait for that one. In terms of what Cyril Gann does, obviously just be interesting to see what who he fights next. Maybe it's a guy like Tom Aspinall. Maybe that could be a guy coming up from injury. Maybe he goes with him. Maybe the loser of Curtis Blades and Pavlovich, maybe he gets that fight. So it'd be interesting to see who Gann gets, but... Yeah, for now, John Jones is now the new champion of the world at heavyweight. Last thing. <laughs> the greatest of all time, So, next we have the co-main event. In a bit of an upset, I certainly got this wrong. Uh, Valentina getting submitted by Alexa Grasso. Alexa Grasso! I think Valentina, after round one, I think Alexa got the first round. It was a fairly close round. I think Alexa got it. But from then on, I think Valentina sort of stamped her authority in the second, third rounds, and even the start of the fourth round as well. It was a close round. Then she made a mistake. She went with a spinning kick. Uh, Alexa was able to sort of catch that and sort of get get her in a submission, grab her back, and, and it was really in the blink of an eye that she was able to get that, that into that position. So... Good on Alexa. It's just that those Mexicans, they've got so much heart. You can you can never finish them. They're just incredibly hard to finish. And they, as I said, they've got heart of a warrior. And Alexa showed that. So she was able to get through get through the fire of rounds two and three and push through and able to get um, Valentina. So I think that that demands an immediate rematch. I think Valentina's earned that right. I think she's defended the belt seven times before obviously losing it today. So she's been on an incredible run. So it is only fitting that she gets a immediate rematch so that is what i think is next there shavkat beating jeff neal and still undefeated shavkat no man shavkat's a real deal man i he was so good i expected big things from him i expect this to be a good fight jeff neal did a bit better than what i expected as well hit him with some good shots but shavkat showed he's got a chin and he's he did, i thought he was going to use more wrestling but he didn't he was he was up doing striking majority of the fight so yeah and then how how the hell you get a standing choke like that is it's it's incredible so he's he's such a good fighter. i cannot wait to see who he gets next you got a guy like me a wonder boy that's i think ranked six in the division so or five no five i think or somewhere around there so he's around that mark does he get that does he get a guy that's high like a Bilal muhammad or or Colby Covington, someone like that. I don't know. It'll be very interesting to see who he gets next, but Shavkat will definitely be getting someone up there. And as for Jeff, I'm not actually sure exactly who he'll get next. He he had some good moments in this fight, but obviously just wasn't quite enough. And Shavkat was able to get the win in the end. So moving to the fourth fight on this card, Mateus Gamrot and Jalen Turner. This was actually a good fight as well. I think even though Gamrot was able to take Jalen Turner down and keep him down for portions of the fight. I think John Turner did have some moments on the feet as well. So it was a competitive fight. I think I did have Gamrot winning. That was a split decision, but I did have Gamrot winning that 29-28. So 
competitive fight, again, I think Gamrot gets a top five opponent now. He's only lost to Benil Dariush, and, and he's obviously fighting Charles Oliveira, and if he wins against Charles, then he gets a title shot. So he's right up amongst the top of the weight class. I think Gamrot should get a top five guy. Does he get a guy like a Dustin Poirier, or or does he get the loser of Fazeev and Gaethje in a couple of weeks? I don't know. it would be interesting to see who he gets next. And then Jalen Turner, he's still young. He's... He, he had good moments, so I'm sure he'll go out to the drawing board and he'll get someone. Still in the side of the top 15 because he was ranked number 10, so he might get a guy that's maybe ranked 11, 12, 13 maybe. But yeah, I'm, I'm fine with him. He's still got a bright future. And then the other fight on the main card, Bo Nickel and Jamie Pickett. I expected Bo Nickel to get it done and another first round finish again. Another submission. He's just incredible with his wrestling, so... It took him nearly three minutes this time to get it done, but it's a step up in competition from obviously the Contender Series. But still being able to finish an opponent that quickly, it's, it's incredible. So he's on a on a pretty quick trajectory, I think, at middleweight to be getting a sort of a ranked opponent. I don't know if we get a ranked opponent just yet. He's only had one fight. It's only his fourth fight in his career. So I would imagine it'll be a few more fights before we see him get a ranked opponent. But he's looking the goods at the moment. So let's see if he can continue on that path. And then Jamie Pickett as well. Like, what can you really take from that? Not too much. Bo Nickel was going to be an incredibly hard test for him. Jamie's got a lot of experience. He'll he'll go back and he'll get another fight, I'm sure. But yeah, it was it was Bo Nickel was was a very tough point to come up against. So, but that was the main card. Uh, obviously, with the in terms of the, the bonuses and stuff, obviously Jeff Neal and Shavkat got the fight of the night. That was an incredible fight. I love that fight from start to finish. Just some other ones from note from uh, winners from the card as well. Cody Garbrandt. Defeating Trevin Jones. Trevin Jones did actually finish the fight really well. Got Garbrandt out here with a couple of shots and got him on the ground. And and luckily Garbrandt banked the first two rounds. Otherwise, that could have been a bit interesting. But yeah. So it'd just be interesting to see who um, Garbrandt gets next. Hopefully he can continue his rise up the top. Because obviously a bit of a fall from grace from being the Bannerweight champion. And then now he's sort of, sort of... I don't even know if he's ranked at the moment. So he might get be ranked after this, but he wasn't before. Drickus Dupasi, I love this guy, man. He's so good. Uh, another finish again. Finished Derek Brunson at the end of the second round. His um, team for the Italian, he got hit with a lot of shots. So Drickus just continues his, his rise up in the middleweight division now. So Derek Brunson was, I think he was around the top five. He might have been fifth or something. So he's right up there. Drickus is going to get another guy that's in the top five now. He's right there. And, and it's good for the middleweight division because if it'll be interesting to see if Izzy or Pereira, the winner of that fight, because if Izzy wins, they're probably not going to do a trilogy fight straight away. They'll save that maybe for a little bit down the line. But then if Izzy was to be champion, he needs new contenders. Whereas if Pereira's champion, maybe Drickus is caught in a little bit of a log jam because Whitaker's probably deserving of a title shot against Alex Pereira. Then you've got a lot of other guys that did lose to Izzy and, and Pereira's next. So it just opens up more matchups. So I think for Drickus, he'll be hoping Izzy wins because I think Drickus gets a pre like, it might even be fast tracked to a title shot because he's the guy up there that hasn't had a shot. Um, Amanda Rebus defeating Vivian um, Araujo um, with just unanimous decision 29 um, 27, 30 26, and 30 27. So not a good win for her. I think Vivian Araujo was, I think, seven. Um, in the rankings, so and I think Alexa Grasso was defeated her in the last fight, and that got her a title shot. So Amanda Rivers is right up there. Probably needs another win or two before looking at a title shot, but it's a good win for her. Um, and then Ian Gary gets the win over Song Kanan, uh, third round finish, four minutes twenty-two. So nearly at the end. So it was good to see him go nearly the full distance, but still get get that finish. So he looks like a great prospect of welterweight. So looking forward to seeing who he goes next. And the other guy I just want to mention is, the other two so I want to mention as well, Cameron Simon defending Lamona Martinez. He's he's a great prospect at Banawa. I'm really looking forward to seeing who he gets because, yeah, he's undefeated. I think he's 8-9 now. So it be good to see who he gets. And then Tabitha Ritchie as well defending Jessica Penne by arm, uh, submission through armbar. So very good performance from her as well. And she's put herself right in the mix in the weight class as well. So... Plenty happening out of that. Next up, we've got UFC 286, which I think it was in a fortnight. So we've got, it's Leon Edwards taking on Kamar Usman in the trilogy fight. That's, oh, I really don't know how that's going to go. It's going to be very interesting. Can Kamari come bounce back and get that win? Can Leon beat Kamari another time? Obviously, it's going to be not that high altitude. So obviously, there won't be any excuses of uh, 
like the wear and like the wearing on the body because of the high altitude. So it'll be interesting to see how that fight goes. And yeah, then you've got Rafael Fiziev and Justin Gaethje. If the winner of that fight puts himself again right up amongst that that title shot picture, so. Yeah, very interesting. Then a few weeks after that, we've got Israel Desanya and Alex Pereira, the second fight. So, and hopefully, um, Izzy can get the job done because Izzy's one of my guys. So, um, but yeah, Alex Pereira is so good as well. So, it's going to be very interesting to see who gets that fight. So, we'll be back for the preview for that one in a couple of weeks. But until then, appreciate you guys tuning in and watching the video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're trying to reach a thousand subscribers. So, you just click the sub button, it takes two seconds and it does really help the channel out so i appreciate all you guys support and all the social media are in the description below so until the next video i'll catch you guys then i'm out cheers